I've been through a season like this before. And when I went through it, it was a very long season. It was about eight years. I didn't think I was going to get out of it. I did not believe God for getting me out of it. My faith felt like it failed me. But you know what? He brought me out and he brought me out into a spacious place. Hello, friends, and welcome to the Honeycast. I am getting very real today and vulnerable. Why? Because I feel like you need to hear this, and I feel like that I need to share this because we all experience disappointment. Disappointment in life, disappointment in when you're setting goals and you're not maybe getting to the goal yet. I see this a lot with my clients in their weight loss journey and even in their hormone health journey. And that discouragement, that disappointment, it's really disappointment, just, just, it's like insidious sometimes. And I feel like I'm speaking to disappointment quite a bit. And a lot of that has to do with our expectations and the fact that disappointment is part of life. It's a 50-50. It's a disappointment. And then there is excitement and hope. There is rejection. And then there's approval. There's always the other side of the coin, and I don't think that we spend enough time talking about how to deal and move through disappointment. So I'm just going to get real with you guys. Not that I haven't been real, but I'm going to get a little personal today. I'm actually going to read from my journal, and I do have a point to this. So my disappointment in this particular podcast is about my latest masterclass, which if you were there, my first masterclass was not so great because we were not ready for it. We tried, we were not ready. And I am proud of myself for showing up and I'm basically teaching Fit and Fabulous after 40. And I just was so passionate and I have so much I want to share and give. And it just, we just weren't ready. And it just didn't turn out like I wanted it to. And my goal is to touch as many women as I can. And for those of you who need a coach, my goal is to get you into my programs and help you change your life help you see that you're the hero. You can do this. I've seen it over and over. It's just my passion. So when you hear me talking about my programs and whatnot, am I trying to build my business and, and you know, take care of my family? Absolutely, I am. But I, I so believe in what I'm doing. I so believe in Trim Healthy. I so believe that women do not have to suffer and gain weight and not lose weight and feel like crap and not take care of themselves in their 40s, 50s, 60s, and beyond. And so the things that I do for these masterclasses in my tribe and my Feminine Freedom Pathway and you know supporting my free Facebook group and all of that it's not just to get something. It it really is to add value to this world. And I take it very seriously. I'm very amped up about it. I'm very invested. And so that is why the disappointment is great because I'm very invested. And I see that with you women too, that are on your weight loss and health journey, you're very invested or hopefully you are. And you're, you're either trying so hard and you care so much. And then Things may may get in the way of you getting your results when you want to get them. And that's really what I want to talk about is the disappointment that comes and how we can move through it. So this is what I wrote. So I did that master class and I just felt like, wow, that kind of sucked. <laughs> and so this is what I wrote in my journal. All right, disappointment feels like tears in my eyes, a pit in my stomach, dread, and a tendency to doubt, feeling a little fear about this program, my master class. Lots of thoughts that may not be helpful, but I'd like to process it and move through it. So this is my prayer that I give you, God, my disappointment. I really hate disappointment. Pause here. I feel like I had a lot of disappointment in my upbringing, in my childhood. And so because there was a lot of disappointment there, it's something that I try to create my life to avoid anybody else. (laughs) So I'm learning to sit with disappointment and process it and accept it and move through it. So unpause. I hate disappointment. I feel that frequently. It's hard to stay in faith, encouraged, and keep believing. Anybody else? Have you been there? 
Now, I don't stay here because I love that I can move through with the tools that I have and with other things as well, but it's important to just acknowledge. And so I then go into, okay, I'm going to feel this. This is the way it feels, but I am going to shift out of this disappointment. So without reading any more of my personal journey, I felt led to look at the places where I was successful, not disappointed, but where was I successful? And this is what I want you to think about. When you are experiencing disappointment over a situation, over an expectation that's unmet, over a relational issue, whatever it is, where have you shown up in a successful way in that disappointment? That is so key. That's what you tell your brain to look for where you are being showing up or successful or whatever word you want to use. So here's what I put. I had to dig deep to find this for myself. So here's what I wrote. It actually means So instead of, you know, staying in that disappointment, what I'm making it mean, I'm not making it mean some other things that I'm going to share with you. I'm making this mean that I am courageous for stepping out to dream, to go for what I want. And it means that I'm human, relying on my God. It means that I won't settle for lack, less, or mediocrity. It means I'm willing to be vulnerable, fail, not stay safe and stuck. It means I want more so that I can do more and be more to other people, to have the biggest impact on this world and everybody that I come into contact with. I will not stop. And that is the determination that I've always had, which can be a very stubborn thing and not so helpful, but you know what? Point in the right direction, it can be amazing. Unless this is not what I'm supposed to be doing, but I know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Therefore, I'm looking at the places where I am successful and I'm not disappointed. Making things mean this is what we do. When something happens, we don't get what we want. We're not where we want to be yet. We made a mistake. We can't figure something out. We make it mean things. And this is what my coaching has really taught me. I don't have to make it mean anything. As a matter of fact, that is the story we tell ourselves that keeps us stuck and in limitation. And so here is what I was making that kind of not so great masterclass mean about me. And then when I make this mean these things, then I'm like stuck and not in a good place. So here's what I make it. I'm making it mean. It's not working. I'm not good enough. I'm not successful. I'm doing it wrong. I'm not enrolling enough people who care and need my help. I expected people to want to do this, to change their lives. And all of these things I'm making it mean are my identity. And that's not who I am. This is just a masterclass. This is just an invite. This means nothing. Although it is my heart and soul and everything that I create, it's my baby. It's my heart and soul. But it doesn't mean that I am a disappointment or that I am a failure or whatever these things that my brain is telling me. And so what I had to do was be aware that I'm making it mean these things and go, no, that is not true. I am not agreeing with that. I am not agreeing with that. Here's what I'm going to agree with. Here is the truth. Here's what I want to anchor into. Okay, it's working and I can't see it like a garden. When you plant a garden, you plant seeds and you water it and you wait and watch for it to grow until you see little fruit pop up and you're like, oh my gosh, it's the same thing with our weight loss journey, with my master class, with whatever we're doing, it is an investment. And we may not see that it's working right now, but it doesn't mean that it's not working. Here's my next thought. Let's see. I am building my business here. This is, this is just like when we're raising our kids or growing a garden. It's a, it's, I'm talking about the process. This is a process. And when I look at it like, oh, okay, I'm not there. I'm not getting what I want or need or thought I wanted. That's okay because I'm on my way 
and I will figure this out. This is how you become resilient. This is how you become that in that growth mindset is that you take any failure and you take any disappointment and you reappoint it for your good. You reappoint it to learn. Okay, well, what do I need to learn about that? Well, I needed to learn a few things about that masterclass and I needed to learn a few things about this program, my delivery, just even my expectation. I had to learn about that. And so I was able to shift out of that disappointment and into really the realm of possibility. And, oh, what about next time? And what about, you know, strategies that will come? Think about this with your weight loss journey or your health journey. Uh, just like me, right in, I'm right in the middle, you guys. I'm right in the middle. I don't feel any better. But my mindset, I have committed. I have committed to invest in myself for a future return. That is what we're doing in our weight loss journey, our health journey, your business, whatever it is, your relationships. I am investing for a future return. And also the thought really helps me that all things are working for my good. All things, all the balls that I've dropped, all the places where I've been, the place where I am now, it's all working for my good. And I can almost, I can visualize it. I can see me coming out of this season because you know what? I've been through a season like this before. And when I went through it, it was a very long season. It was about eight years. I didn't think I was going to get out of it. I did not believe God for getting me out of it. My faith felt like it failed me, but you know what? He brought me out and he brought me out into a spacious place. And guess what? Are we on the mountaintop all the time? No, I'm kind of back here again in a different way. But because I choose to believe that he will get me through, I've already been through this. I can visualize myself feeling great and feeling better and having this testimony and also this teaching for my clients when I'm hearing them talk about how they're feeling and their hormones and they're exhausted and their adrenals. And I will know how to coach them. I will be able to help them get to their breakthrough. That's what keeps me going. Otherwise, I'm going to sit here and think about how miserable I feel sometimes. Also helps me to focus on gratitude. And I'm so thankful for Trim Healthy and all of the things I've learned from Pearl and Serene and from Trim Healthy and all of the studies and all of the investments that I've made in certifications and courses. I just joined a new course. I've got courses. I am in so many different things in, in a good way to up-level, to be the best coach and person and wife and daughter and mother and sister that I can be to bring the most value. That drives me more than me trying to take care of myself and feel better, although I want that. So my commitment is not to the scale, okay? My commitment is not to the results of the masterclass. It's not. My commitment is to this vision and this goal that I have to make the biggest impact to change lives and also to be the healthiest that I can be. How in the world can I do all of the things that I am called to do when I am not in health? That also drives me. Yes, I don't want to feel yucky in my clothes and I want to look good and I want to feel good. It's taken me a good long time to get here, like 14 years, and I'm not even feeling good right now. (laughs) But when you are tied to those results, you are going to be disappointed and you might give up your journey. And the only thing that can keep you from losing the weight, from optimizing your hormones, from becoming strong, from doing the thing you want to do, building the business, being in that relationship, whatever it is, is if you quit. And if you're tied to the results, the results are not up to us. And this, my husband would say that to me and I would get so mad. I would get so mad because I didn't understand how to work as hard as I could, but give up the results. I literally, if he, when he said that to me like a billion times, I would roll my eyes because I didn't know how to do that. And you know what? All these years of, you know, the day in, the day out, all the lessons I've learned, all the things I've gone through, I'm learning that lesson. And I had to just be able to go through it when my strength failed. 
my strength failed. As a matter of fact, I'm in the closet and I was here in this closet not too long ago when I was in that forced fast with my tooth and I couldn't eat, and I was so hungry, and I couldn't sleep, and I was so tired, and all of my faculties were so depleted, and I was just at that bottom. Like, I have no more strength. If God's strength does not overtake me and help me, I'm not going to be able to do anything. That's that's the wall that I hit, and I don't want that, you know, for anybody else, and if you wonder about the wall, I actually talked about that in my last podcast, but I'm kind of pointing back to that disappointment can really take us places we don't need to go. And I would just encourage you to take stock of what your brain is telling you. What are you thinking? Where is that disappointment? Can you process that a little bit? Can you journal? Can you talk about it? Can you release some of it? Can you switch from making your disappointment mean something about you to creating a future version of yourself where you see yourself successful dealing with disappointment like waves that come in from the ocean? That is what I would want you guys to do. So maybe a little assignment is to take a look at those little foxes that spoil the vine, like disappointment, and see see where you are. Rate yourself with that. See what you can do to process it and then release it and find some thoughts that are going to be helpful for yourself. Look for how you've shown up successfully and look for where you are doing what you want to do. Our brain wants to look for where we're not doing that, but I guarantee there's places where you are. And lastly, I would encourage you to spend five minutes daily in gratitude. Just make yourself make a list of things you're grateful for and sit with it in your body. Let that be in your body. Let that vibration, uh, let that energy of gratitude really push out some of that negative disappointment. 